So what the heck actually goes on with prolotherapy? Different types of solutions. Um, the one that we use most commonly is just high concentration dextrose between 10 and 25%. It's sugar water. Well, how the heck is sugar water going to heal anything? Well, interestingly, the research has shown that if you increase your sugar content by just 0.5% in the uh, tissues around the cells, that it gets those cells to release the exact same growth factors that uh, start the tissue healing process. So that, that inflammatory healing cascade that I showed, there are specific growth factors that activate that healing, and the same growth factors are released when you increase your um, glucose concentration. There are other ingredients. This is a common one here, sodium moriwate, which is uh, cod liver oil. And uh, I'm not going to go into the mechanism. It's just kind of, I'm not going to bore you with it. But basically what it does is it um, basically causes a startup of the inflammatory healing process directly through this arachidonic acid chain, which is part of the physiology of the inflammatory cascade. So one important thing to keep in mind, though, you know, it's easy to get caught up in the fancy smancy of the, this solution and that solution and this technology and PRP this and stem cell that. But all of that is worthless if you don't make the right diagnosis and you don't know where to put the stuff, right? Um, and I'll be honest with you, any you know, doctor can go spend a couple thousand dollars and get himself a centrifuge and say, oh, I do PRP now. But you need to have the training. The folks that taught me, they caught me when I was young and didn't know any better. And so I've been doing this stuff for several years now, even though I look like a kid. Um, but I've been doing this stuff for a number of years. And uh, of course, you know how they say that you learn something best when you teach it. Uh, I've been teaching folks around the world to do this stuff for six years now, I guess. And as my Kung Fu teacher used to say, I'm really good because I've spent 25 years watching how all of you screw up my martial art. And I'm not going to say it that bluntly, but basically when you see the same people making the same mistakes year after year and you train hundreds of doctors, you learn how not to make those mistakes. And so your technique becomes very, very pure and very solid because you basically know what not to do because you teach all these folks and, you know, and, and that's how it works out. So I feel very blessed to have the opportunity to work with these folks and improve their technique and at the same time improve my technique. So it's, it's quite a fun uh, process. Anyway, do, using the regenerative therapies is more than just sticking some, a different type of solution in your syringe. All right? It's a different way of thinking, a different way of evaluation and diagnosis, and putting this whole thing in the context of the whole patient. You know, when you work with a patient, you're not just treating their ligament, you're not just treating their tendon, you're treating a human being. And so being able to put that in the context of you know, how is their function, What's, how are they doing psychologically? I mean, obviously, this is stressful stuff when you're dealing with a chronic pain condition. So you've got to put all this in the context of, of the patient as a whole. So a couple things about how this stuff goes. Like if, if somebody comes into me and, and, and I do prolotherapy on them, well, what the heck am I doing? ABCs, all right? A for anatomy. Obviously, you have to know the anatomy inside and out. B for bony endpoint. Now, this sounds scary, but believe me, it's actually not that bad. We talked about the anesthesis, how those tendons and ligaments attach at the bone. Well, when I do prolotherapy, that needle tip actually lightly touches the surface of the bone. And when people at first hear that, they freak out, oh, holy crap, you mean the needle's touching my bone and isn't that gonna hurt and blah, blah, blah. I've had a lot of prolotherapy done on myself um, for various sports injuries that I've had. And if the tissue is not injured, you don't even feel it. You can tap on that bone and the, the, the patient doesn't even feel it. Now, if that anesthesis if you have a ligamentous attachment that is chronically injured and irritated, yeah, it's going to hurt because you know you're 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 stimulating that tissue, and so yes, the 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 contact point at that ligamentous site is going to hurt for a couple seconds, but the injection always has numbing medicine in it. So once you do the injection, within a couple seconds, that numbing medicine takes effect, and if you get the right spots, the person comes in in pain. They get up off the table and they're, for the most part, pain free. Now, that numbing medicine is going to wear off and their pain is going to come back until the prolotherapy heals the tissue, which can take actually a couple of weeks before people start to notice the benefit. Um, but if you get the right spots and the numbing medicine numbs up those areas, you know you've done your job because they get up off the table and their pain is gone, which means that you got the right spots. Third thing is compression. Uh, it's the dartboard method, okay? Uh, the closer you stand to a dartboard, the more accurate you're gonna be. So if I'm treating an area where there's a lot of muscle in the way, I want to compress that tissue to decrease the distance so I can, number one, be more accurate and, very importantly, use a smaller needle, right? I use the smallest needles possible because I'll tell you something, here's a little thing. I hate needles, all right? I've done thousands of these things, but I freaking hate needles. And so it takes a lot for me to, you know, have one of my colleagues sit here and stick me with needles and get my elbow feeling better. 
So I very much appreciate when people are kind of needle phobic or sensitive to needles and, you know, and, and they're also already in pain. So it's like, you don't want to torture these poor people. So I use very small needles. Now the thing is it takes, a, it takes more training because you need more finesse to be able to use a smaller needle. Um, but that's one of the reasons why I have done so much training so that I can make it more comfortable for my patient when I do these procedures. Now, here's just a quick demo uh, or a quick diagram here. This is a familiar drawing with all those ligaments in the sacroiliac region. And then here is a diagram from the textbook showing the needle insertion sites here, here, and here. And they correlate directly with where the ligamentous anatomy is. So the injection technique is a very precise technique that relates exactly to where the anatomy is of the structures that you're treating. All right, so PRP, platelet-rich plasma, simple process. You draw up the blood from the patient. You stick it in a centrifuge, and it takes about 15 minutes for it to spin. You suck the part with all the platelets back up into the syringe, and then you do the injection. So pretty basic, pretty quick. The whole procedure can be done in the same office visit. Depending on what you're getting treated, you know, somewhere between 15 and 30 minutes for the visit with the doctor to have the actual procedure. All right, so the whole thing can be done in an hour. This is an interesting picture of, okay, so platelets are these little disc-like things, right? Well, that's only when they're floating around not doing anything. Once they activate and they release their growth factors, whoa, it becomes this honking monster right here. So this is why it helps with clotting because it sort of expands and it has these pseudopods that go all over the place and it releases all these growth factors. So this thing is a very metabolically active cell. Uh, so it goes from this to that. 